Tyler Mackey. I'm a graduate student at UC Davis uh, in the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. And I'm in a field called geobiology, which is looking at how we can look into the, the rock record, earth history, and understand what the role of biology has been in that system, trying to understand the way that life interacts with the earth and changes in the earth interact with life. So we're trying to ask these really big picture questions about evolution and when different types of organisms develop different types of capabilities. And a lot of those questions uh, boil down to how we understand really, really tiny parts of uh, life around us today. So microbial communities, bacteria, um, and other microscopic organisms. And we're asking questions like, when did um, photosynthesis evolve to produce free oxygen in our atmosphere? Because early in Earth history, there was no free oxygen in the atmosphere. And only through time, with the uh, interactions between life and the environment, were we able to get the oxygen in the atmosphere that we breathe today. So when I'm working in Antarctica, I'm looking at these uh, regions where we have really uh, simple ecosystems by our standards as large organisms. It's a setting where we have only microscopic life that's abundant. And so we have these carpets of bacteria that cover the bottom of the lake and form really complicated shapes. And uh, we can have towers or webs that are just built by the behavior of the bacteria because there's nothing else there to disrupt them growing. It's a really beautiful place to ask some of these questions of the uh, relationship between life and organisms because there there's nothing to disrupt their growth. So the features we see are due to the behavior of the bacteria. So we're looking at here is a rock in Southern California. We're in the Beck Spring Formation. Um, and we are looking at uh, rocks that are um, between uh, 1 billion and 750 million years old. So these are pretty old rocks, um, well before we had large animals around disrupting the growth of the bacteria. So in some ways, um, similar to the lakes that we're looking at in Antarctica, um, it's just here, we were in a completely different environment. Um, it's, it's not a polar lake, it's instead probably some sort of, um, of bay or uh, a basin that's filling in. Um, and so we're, we're looking at these types of structures that are preserved in the rocks that give us a record of the microbial communities that were present then. So if we look in, in detail in some of these uh, sort of swirly patterns on the surface, we can see down here variations between light uh, layers and then darker layers around them. And what we're looking at are, are layered accumulations of microbial communities over long periods of time. And when we, when we look at these relationships, between where their layers are present, where they um, might be cut by, by sediments that are surrounding them, we can start to get an idea of the environment that they were growing in and also how they were responding to that environment. So we can start to construct little stories or narratives about uh, maybe a sequence of events that happened. Maybe they were growing, 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 and then the environment changed, there was a big storm, something ripped in and eroded part of them and then they grew on top of that again and we can start to look for cycles and how these patterns may have been repeated through time. And together we can piece together a story of how these particular communities were growing and also how the environment around them was changing in a much longer time period than we can necessarily see in the lakes in Antarctica. So when we are, are looking at the rocks here we have these microbial deposits that can be hundreds and hundreds of feet thick, whereas one where um, in the lakes in Antarctica, we get excited if we have a layer of microbial mass that are this thick. So it's, it's a completely different scale of observation, and we can ask different questions that really complement each other in these different settings. In this formation, we can observe these layered shapes that we call breccia. You can see many bands of dark or organic matter and lighter precipitates that have formed these layered textures, and we call this a microbial lamnite. 
The layers had hardened before being broken, forming different planes of laminae within the rock. We call these pieces clasts. One mystery we wonder about is how long it took for these layers to form. This is the giant oolite from the Beck Spring. The gigantic. Gigantic, excellent. Yes. Well, in this photo we're looking at a sample from the Beck Spring Dolomite where we were observing other textures in the carbonate rocks that were made by bacteria or microbial communities. And in this case, we're looking at some grains that would have been rolling around in the same environment. Uh, these are something called giant ooids. Um, they are much larger than ooids that we see uh, these days in different settings. Um, and ooids are grains that have little concentric layers around them. So if you were to uh, cut one in half, you'd just see a ring within a ring within a ring within a ring looking at uh, how they grew. So in, in the environment where they're forming, uh, they're rolling around on the bottom of the, of the ocean, and there are minerals that are growing on the surface. And as they roll, those keep building up over time until you get that layered pattern. Um, so once they're uh, too large to be transported or uh, currents aren't able to move them, uh, they can just be settled out on the bottom of the ocean and then get cemented together to form a rock. And that rock is called an oolite, which means that it's a rock made out of ooids. Uh, so when we're looking at this, uh, this hand sample that we have, we can start to tease apart what the environment would have been like. It needs to have enough energy to roll around these ooids and allow them to grow. It also, at some point, allowed these to settle out and then uh, cement together into what we see now as a rock. So taken together, we have some idea of what the physical environment was like, and uh, it provides a good starting point for understanding the environment that these microbial communities are forming the structures in uh, nearby.